Уважаемые коллеги, сейчас приступим к презентации программы шахматных школ Шахматной Федерации Армении. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Armenia, Mr. Sarkisyan, President of FIDE, esteemed President of FIDE, Kristani Lumzhinov, distinguished delegates and guests from FIDE, I would like to welcome you and I hope that the discussion of these two days will be extremely productive and useful for the development of chess. I would like to present to you today the several activities of the Chess Federation of Armenia which have been extremely helpful to the inclusion of chess in the education system. We all understand and you know that one of the main ways for development is popularization. A long time ago the Chess Federation started pondering over this. For about 10 years we have been developing this effort to be able to promote chess around the world we had to study our terrain we had to understand the situation on the ground find the representatives find the place to be able to act, organize our activities in the right places and year to year the number of chess hubs grew in our country. Parallel to it, we started to set up chess federations around the country, which have helped our common efforts. Slowly, chess was spreading around the country, becoming more recognized, more popular, more acceptable and more desirable. Then we got to a point at which we had chess hubs around the country. We could then think about organizing various tournaments for men, boys, countrywide and internationally. We stood ready for chess as a country. In terms of the popularity of chess. In 2009 we built a large chess academy in the city of Yerevan which could support this popularity. I remember a few years ago the president of our country Ser Sarkisyan said it's apparently big Sambat. I said well Mr. President I think that in a few years it might actually be small and this is where we currently stand we're hosting tournaments and the area which hosts about five or six hundred children is not sufficient it's not large enough uh, throughout the country there's a chess boom and it happened over many years we have massively a great picture. Now we have to ponder next steps. How do we make chess better understood in the schools, more t even more desirable and more popular? In 2005, the Armenian Chess Federation, jointly with the Ministry of Education, decided to host chess Olympiads in the schools. This was a big tournament with four stages lasting half a year with over 15,000 children playing. You can imagine a country of three and a half million. 15,000 is a huge number. The four stages began within the schools. Then the schools would have their teams. The teams would then compete among communities. The communities would then com compete among uh, regions that would be followed by the national tournaments. As the schools were supposed to have tournaments within the schools, we realized they might have some problems. For this, the Chess Federation, the Ar jointly with the Armenian General Benevolent Union, um, gave away chess boards to all the schools of Armenia. Every single school could thus organize the intra-school tournaments. 
then we were able to host very exciting tournaments. Year to year the tournaments are becoming better organized, much more acceptable, much more popular and desirable throughout the country. It has become the most interesting, the most desirable tournament. For the tournament to become more useful, we would host the final stage in different places because we wanted these beautiful competitions to be incentives to provide a stimulus to the different regions. We gradually introduced school uh, chess, we made chess more desirable and we really got to a point that we wanted. And once we had that situation, we could think about introduction of chess into the schools. Four years ago, the president of our country, Ser Sargsyan, said, Sambat, are we ready to include chess in the schools? Understanding that it's going to be an intensive process, we had to survey the international experience. We had to develop curriculum in line with the needs of our country. We had to pilot the curriculum. We had to have groups of psychologists and chess teachers taking part in these discussions, in the piloting, in the testing. In the testing, we had lengthy discussions. In three or four schools of the country, we were testing the process. Our psychologists and teachers took part. And then after the discussions, we would draw conclusions as to the potential problems. Then, when we understood that we're ready with our substance, we had to start preparing the teachers, training the teachers. This was really the most daunting challenge in this process, because around the country you would have to find the right teachers, teachers that actually are fit to be chess teachers. We benefited greatly from the popularization, because we were able to know what resources we have around the country, what resources we could engage to fill the gaps. The country has 1,574 schools. Imagine how many teachers had to be trained. That's about 2,000 teachers had to be trained in the process. And in just a very short period of time, we trained 1,900 teachers. It was quite a challenge to identify these teachers. We had more than hundreds of sessions to identify the teachers, potential teachers. Having these teachers, we could actually say now that we could, we could go to the schools. In 2011, under the auspices of the president, the government decided to introduce chess in the schools. After the decision, the Ministry of Education took a decree to create special classrooms for chess as a subject in each and every school, with all the facilities. As you can see, we're presenting the second year textbook. This is the kids textbook and notebook. This is the teacher guide, teacher handbook, and the teacher uh, orientation guide. And the book presented or prepared by psychologists. After two years of discussions, they reveal the problems that could be encountered in lesson organization. This book was extremely helpful to the teachers in being able to properly organize this work. Having the book, having the teachers, having everything, by 2011, chess was introduced in the schools as a fully-fledged subject. Every new step and chess, we were the first in the world to introduce chess as a subject throughout the system. We were expecting a lot of resistance and criticism. It's natural. Any new endeavor runs into uh, criticism and resistance. But I want to inform you that fortunately there was virtually no criticism. The parents, the school principals, and especially the children welcomed our move, which really shows that Armenia loves chess. People were so enthusiastic about this step. We understand the importance of inclusion of chess in the schools. Now you're seeing the classes as they're conducted. I there are some classes that I really want to highlight. Now look, this 
please watch the video. This lesson, for instance, you could see this is now a third year group of students. They've already had one year. They're now, they can now see, they can fully see the field without the figures and they will do one step problems or two move uh, problems without actually seeing. Now you're just players so you can imagine what it's like to solve problems without seeing. Eight-year-old kids, imagine how developed uh, they are in terms of concentration and visualization. They can solve the problems. These are just eight-year-olds. You know that in the world there are serious problems of concentration of children. This is 45 minutes of the class. Not a single child made any noise. They were all grasped and overwhelmed by the lesson. It's so exciting, so interesting. I admired the process when I saw it. So by inclusion of chess in the schools, we really have done something extremely useful for the development of the intellect of the children. I'm astonished when I see eight-year-olds visualizing the problem and solving it. When we started the teaching, quite naturally we would encounter some problems. For these problems, around the country we started to have discussions with the teachers of the potential problems of teaching. Understanding that there are some problems, we decided uh, through our team of psychologists and teacher educators to become engaged. In the meantime, jointly with the Ministry of Education of Armenia, we had decided that in the Teacher Training University of Armenia, we would start training teachers. This is pre-service training for future teachers. Now you see the pedagogical university teaching these classes to the teachers now. In the meantime, the psychologists engaged in research. What areas would it focus on? Feedback from parents, feedback from teachers, and more broadly, what chess does for the development of children's intellect. I think that for chess anywhere in the world, it is a survey of enormous relevance. It's been only one and a half years. Work will continue. But I could already share some good news with you. The kids, the children who are learning chess in the schools and the children who are not learning chess in the schools are different. The survey identified three important factors of advantage, concentration, creativity and logic. It's just in a matter of one and a half years. We already have these results and I believe that in the course of three years we will have a complete picture of the landscape. This is going to be the greatest tool, the weapon for chess to prove that chess is not only a game, it's a very important game for development of mind and personal development. Of course, we also have the leader of our team of psychologists, Mr. Aozum Tsian, who could answer all your questions in greater detail. But I want to inform you that in terms of feedback with parents and teachers, we see that there are some problems. Parents are often unable to be useful to their children in lesson preparation. And they've asked for some support to learn and to be able to help. So with the president of the country, we had a discussion and we concluded that chess should also be taught on our central channel. The central channel, public TV, started back in 1972 to have a program on chess. It's had 2037 programs since 1972. 
But besides, we began in 2011 a new program, which was primarily focused on the teaching of chess by television. It has been extremely helpful, of course, and it's made it very interesting and easy for the parents and for the children and for the grandpas and grandmas that want to get engaged with their grandchildren or children in uh, their education. Besides, as we have some problems and we would like to achieve greater effects with chess, we decided jointly with the Armenian General Benevolent Union to start virtual teaching of um, chess. The virtual teaching um, is in two areas, for adults and for children, young children. Now, this work is underway currently, so I would ask you to watch this video. This is the current progress report. First, we will get acquainted with the most important piece, the king. This is for adults. Of course, we have some parts of lessons sped up to save time here, but anyhow, this is the king can progress. capture an opponent's piece. We remove that piece and place the king on the corresponding square. The queen's move. The queen can move in any direction as long as the path is not obstructed by other pieces. This is, of course, normally done much more slowly. We have sped it up and taken parts, only parts of the lesson. Please be my friend, and I'll help you get to know the amazing world of chess. Together, let's now unlock the mysteries of this wonderful game. Chess is a game played by two players. Each player moves one set of pieces, black or white. The battlefield for a game is called a chess And now for kids. It consists of 32 white and 32 black squares, arranged It's in about 5 to 8 year olds. Let's start with the king. Each player has only one king, who is very important and worth the entire game. The king can move one square at a time in one direction. You cannot have opposing kings in neighboring squares. There should be at least one square between the two kings. As you can see, the Chess Federation of Armenia has really done a lot of uh, work to prepare the inclusion of chess in the general education system. In this area and in all the areas that are important for the development of chess, the Chess Federation is working just as hard. The victories that we have today that bring joy to the Armenian people and to chess are only the results of correct, consistent, hard efforts. I want to thank the President of our country as the President and as the President of the Federation for this brilliant success. And now I will ask you to watch these beautiful and pleasant events.